Have you ever felt like that? That you're just a speck of dust in this endless ocean of dust? That you're just a drop of water in an endless sea? That you really don't matter much? That you don't have much to offer to this world? That you're, you're here today and gone tomorrow, and what you do have to offer won't have any lasting impact? Have you ever felt like that? I have. And maybe there's been a moment or two in your life when you felt like that. And, and if you have, then I got to tell you, we're in good company. Because a guy by the name of David um, felt like that. He went out under the stars one night and he was looking up and he said, when I look at your heavens, and you can follow along, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is my, man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? So what David was asking here in this verse was that, who am I? Am I unique? We've talked about this before. In fact, Pastor Dave mentioned it last week talking about the immensity of our universe. And so today what I'd like to do is ask you to step back and, and uh, consider the immensity of our universe one more time. Folks, you and I live on this planet Earth. It's about 25,000 miles around to travel around our, our, our globe. And this planet Earth is part of a solar system that, that orbits around a star called the sun. We're about 93,000 miles away from the sun. And our sun is part of a, a larger body of stars called a galaxy, the Milky Way. Now, I want to remind you that, that we live on this planet Earth that is 93,000 miles away from the sun. The sun is just a a medium-sized, average-sized star in a larger galaxy that's just an average-sized galaxy. But this galaxy holds some 400 million stars. 400 million stars. And what's more that we know from our Science that there's probably between 160 and 180 billion galaxies out there. So if you do the math of an average galaxy of 400 billion stars, multiply it times about 160 billion galaxies, and we have a septillion stars out there. Now, a septillion isn't a number that we use a lot. It's 10 with 24 zeros behind it. When King David looked up into the skies and he was looking at this earth, he saw maybe, I don't know, a couple thousand stars up there. And he was asking, who am I? And now we know that there are about a septillion stars up there. Who am I? And then when I consider that on this little earth, planet earth that we live on, that there are about 7.2 billion people on here. Who am I? But I want you to think about this planet Earth that we live on. This planet Earth is 93 million miles away from the sun. It's a just right planet because we are just the right distance away from the sun. If we were any closer to the sun, we would get too hot. We would burn up. If we would get any farther away from the sun, we would get too cold and we couldn't survive. This planet Earth that we live on has the perfect gravity. If gravity were any stronger, then dangerous gases like ammonia and methane would stay in our, our atmosphere and wouldn't be released into the, into the ozone beyond, and we would suffocate. But if it became any weaker, the gravity was any weaker, then the water would escape from our atmosphere and pretty soon we would die of thirst. 
and we live in a just right planet that has a just right moon. Our moon is a little bit bigger in relationship to the size of our planet than other moons to other planets. But the gravitational pull of our moon is just perfect to keep our globe on a perfect 23 degree angle so that as our earth rotates, that it cools down at night and warms up during the day and keeps the temperature just perfect for human existence. Folks, you and I live on a just right planet, tailor-made by God for human existence. And David wonders why. Why? What is man that you were mindful of him? Who am I? But he answers his own question. He says, yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and you've crowned him with glory and honor. Friends, I got to tell you, do you hear what David is saying here? You, you are the crown of God's creation. His crown. You. So much so that David was moved to write these words in Psalm 139. He says, Oh God, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book, and in your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. God loves you so much that he knit you together just the way he wants you. You are intricately woven together, fearfully and wonderfully made. You! In Genesis chapter 2, we read about these hands of God that were able to hang the sun and the moon in this massive universe, forming you out of the dust of the ground. And then breathing into you his spirit, his living breath, so that you might be his. You are unique. You know, I don't know how unique you are. The retina in the back of your eyes, the tissue in the very back of your eyeball has a pattern, and you're the only one that has that pattern. The pattern on your fingers, your fingertips, is unique to you. Even if you were a, 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 a twin, an identical twin, even your twin wouldn't have a match. Your voice, when it's recorded digitally, has its own pattern unique to you. And the DNA that you're made with, the little teeny microscopic building blocks that God uses to make you is unique to you. I learned something this week that I thought I'd like to share with you. If we were to put, able to put your microscopic DNA, those strands together end to end, your DNA that makes up you would stretch from the earth to the sun 93 million miles and back 400 times. And nobody else on this universe has ever or ever will have the same DNA as you. Friends, you are unique. In fact, you're so unique that not only did God make you unique, but He also determined when you will be here and how long and where you would be. It says here in the same psalm, in your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me. In Acts chapter 17, we hear Paul telling us that this God who created the earth and everything that's in it determined a lot of times, periods, and the boundaries of your dwelling place. So not only did God make you unique, not only did He make you different from anybody else, 
But there's nobody else that has ever lived on this earth that was born to live where you live exactly, the time that you live, in the relationships in which you live. You are unique. So that answers our question, am I unique? But I was thinking about this. I'm not sure there's very many people in this world that would argue with that. I mean, we know from science that our fingerprints are unique, our DNA is unique. What are we really asking when we ask that question? Am I unique? You know what I think I'm asking? Is, am I important? Am I valuable? Am I even necessary on this earth? Well, let me tell you what our God has to say. In Romans chapter 5, we learn that one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to die. But God shows His love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I want you to think about this for a second. I want you to ponder that. God loved you so much that He was willing to sacrifice His Son for you so that you could live with Him forever. Even though you disappointed Him, even though you hurt Him, even though you disobey Him, Even though you constantly sin against Him, He still loves you that much. On my phone, I have a picture of a little baby. That baby is our grandson. And let me tell you, folks, I can't even imagine sacrificing my grandson for anybody. But that's what God did for you. For you. You're loved. But God's not finished yet. He gives us a purpose. This Jesus who died on the cross, after He had died on the cross, after He had taken our punishment on that cross for us, After he rose from the dead, he came to his disciples, to you and me, and he said to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. And if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. Friends, now as God's unique and loved children, He comes to you and He says, I've got a purpose for you. And the purpose that I have for you is the same purpose that God has, to love other people, to to live for them, and to give them life-giving good news. Are you important? Absolutely. Do you have a purpose? You have the most important purpose in creation, to love as God loved, to help others to know that God loves them. And God isn't finished. He's still not finished. God didn't just create this world and then spin it and stood back and and watch it. God didn't just create you and then leave you to your own devices. He takes care of you. He takes care of His world. God didn't say to you, I've got a purpose for you. Here's your job. And then shoo us out the door and say, okay, get to work. Oh, God gave you promises. And He says, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will send you my counselor, and he will guide your words. And then he gifts us. He gives us the gifts that we need to accomplish this. He says, now there are many 
a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For, folks, I want you to read that last sentence with me, okay? To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To each, to you, you are included. Every single one of you has been given the Holy Spirit a special gift or a two or three or more so that you could be a blessing to others. Now, some of you will remember that I used to be in youth ministry. So I'd like to conclude uh, my sermon today by asking you to help me out. I'm going to ask you to finish a sentence. Some of you, I won't be able to get to all of you. This is why Lutherans sit in the back. <laughs> but I'm going to ask you to finish the sentence, some of you, that says, I am, and then I want you to finish that. I am. Now, one of the other things that I did in youth ministry was I never allowed cop-outs. A cop-out is using an answer that somebody else gave. I want your answer to be unique, if you catch my drift. So, I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Beautifully and wonderfully made. I am a child of God. A child of God. I am a creation of God. A creation of God. I am That's a cop out. <laughs> he used that. What are you? I am God's creation. God's creation. I am bald and forgiven. Bald and forgiven. <laughs> I am creative. Creative. I am happy to be here. Happy to be here. I am saved. Saved. I am special and unique. Special and unique. You're off the hook. <laughs> Folks, I can go around this room and talk to every one of you, and there can be an entirely different answer that every single one of you has given or could give. If nothing else, you can say, I am Tim Lindemann, right? Because there's only one of me, and there's only one of you. You folks are wonderfully unique. You are wonderfully knit together just the way that God wanted you to be. You are valuable. God values you so much that he was willing to send a son to die for you. Folks, what gives you value? Is it the success at the job? Or the good grades that you get at school or not? Is it the relationships that you have, whether you have a good relationship with your parents or not, or your children? Is your value based upon what you can or cannot do? No. Your value is based upon the fact that the creator of the universe who made that massive world looks at you and says, you are my beloved, and I choose you. I choose you to be about my work, to love others, to have that purpose in your life. And folks, I want to tell you something. That purpose is timeless. It's got eternal ramifications, and nothing matters more. You are loved. You are unique. You are valuable. You are necessary. And you have that on no other authority than by the authority of the God of the universe himself. Amen?